I am always on the lookout for gibbons. This morning I decided I was really going to go after them and managed to locate quite a few groups. All of the groups had young babies and I think because of this they were very cautious and um, whenever I tried to get close to them they either turned their back on me or just got themselves behind a bush or a branch or just moved a little bit away so that it was difficult for me to get a proper look at the most frustrating. Jumping from branch to branch. Of course, this is uh, the best of the gibbons at brachiating, the, the true brachiating, swinging below branches, arm over arm, this white handed gibbon. It's also uh, heavily dependent on fruit. About 70% of its diet is fruit, so it can only live in forests that are very rich in fruiting trees, as uh, this forest in Khao Yai here is a lot of fig trees. Another interesting thing about these white-handed gibbons is they, they come in two colour forms. There's a light form and a dark form. The face is always black with a white border, but the body colour can be this light cream or a very dark brown. And um, this is found in both sexes, and uh, then the young can be either colour as well. Very interesting indeed. Fascinating to spend the day watching these beautiful animals, one of the real trademark species here at Kauai National Park. We came across an ant nest in a green thorn tree. The nest was about two meters off the ground and was built out of what looked like mud and vegetable fibers. We identified the ants as being cocktail ants because of their heart-shaped abdomen, which when the ant is alarmed or excited, lifts its abdomen up into the air. There were also these silky webs around it, and I'm not sure if they were part of the nest or not. These silky nests being a common feature of the tailor ant, which uses the silk to hold and strengthen its nest. They were gathering on the nest in clumps near to the entrances, and I can only think that this was some kind of security check. The soldier ants guarding the entrance and was making sure that every ant coming into the nest was not an intruder. There were little freeways up the branches and stems and uh, up the little vines. And uh, as the ants moved, they seemed to meet and communicate with each other as they passed by. They were surrounding these little nodules or blisters on the stems and leaves of the tree. What I thought were blisters or sores on the tree 
were in actual fact soft browned scale insects. And these little scale insects uh, secrete honeydew and this is what the ants were after. They were gathering up the dew from the scale insects and then heading back to the nest. As the sun started coming up, we noticed quite a bit of bird activity. And getting out there, we, we spotted quite a few other common dolphins, which are the main animals that really get the bait up to the surface. We came across a very small school of red eyes. And these guys ball in very loose balls. They're not tightly packed together, which really, really frustrates the sharks. They battle to get a, a decent mouthful. First, the dolphins come up. They, they push the, the little sardines up to the surface. Once they're closer to the surface, the birds can obviously see them from above. They start diving in. And uh, once that happens, together with the sharks and the dolphin, it all creates quite a chaotic experience underneath the ocean. A lioness had managed to sneak around this herd of wildebeest. Her sole purpose was to drive this herd closer to the pride. It was a good plan, executed badly. There was no contact between the lions and the buffalo this week, but them being in the heart of their territory still, I'm sure that an interaction is imminent. 